Measures of spread can be used to describe the variability in a given sample of data. In this video, we will show methods for finding the range, quartiles, and interquartile range of a collection of data. We'll start by loading the student statistics package. That way we can utilize its commands within our context menus. We'll also define some data. In this case, it's some, uh, a set of data taken from a recent student examination with a possible top score of 100. The simplest measure of spread is called the range. And the range is really just the difference between the highest and lowest values. So the easiest way to find this is just going to be to take our data, right click on it, and then we'll sort this in ascending order in order to find the maximum value and the minimum value. So the range in this case will just be equal to 82 minus 14 or 68. Now the range is a rather crude measurement as it only uses two values, namely the max and the min. Another way to calculate spread is to calculate quartiles. And what quartiles do is they cut the data into quarters, similar to the way that the median cuts the data into halves. So I'll borrow this data, this sorted data from above, move this down here to this next line. And what we're going to be doing is let's start by finding the first quartile. In the first quartile, we're going to be looking for the value that's one quarter of the way up the list. So one way to look at this is to first subdivide our list into halves. So here's our first half, here's our second half. Then what we'll look for is the middle or the median value of that half. So in this case, the middle value is 62. So our first quartile is equal to 62. If we look at the second half of data, the middle value here is 75. So that means our third quartile is going to be equal to 75. So quartiles are interesting because it can also tell us whether or not a distribution is symmetric about the median. So say if we've gone through and we found the median value, which would correspond to the value that's right in between 72 and 74 here, or in this case, 73, we can see how this data is structured around those points. So here we would have that the first quartile is even further away than the third quartile from the data. So this gives us a good indication of how variable this data is. Now an even more refined measure of spread is to look for the interquartile range, which is the difference between the first and the third quartiles. So in this case, the interquartile range is just going to be equal to 75 minus 62 or 13. And the interquartile range is often favored over the range because it's not really affected by any of the outlying low or high scores. So now that we've found these by hand, let me show you how to find a couple of these using the student statistics context menu. So again, I'll go back here, I'll load up our data. And what we'll do is we'll just right click on the data, we'll go down to student statistics, go to quantities, and then we'll choose to find quartile. First thing we'll do is we'll find the first quartile, we'll just type in one here. There's 62. Let's now find the third quartile, so we'll again go down to student statistics, quantities, quartile, find the third quartile, 75. And lastly, to find the interquartile range, we'll do the exact same thing. Go down to here and find the same value of 13. So those are kind of shortcuts to find do those exact same computations that I just did by hand over on the left side here. But potentially an even more interesting way of, of viewing this is to generate a plot. So now if we go to our data here, we can choose student statistics, quantities, interquartile range, and plot. And now with a plot, we can more easily see all of our data. The data here is our, our blue lines, and then our first quartile, our third quartile, and our interquartile range.